Okay, here we're going to look at the questions 11 and 12, if I have time. I'm going to try. These ones are a little longer, so I might need to do two videos here. These questions are generally the hanging masses going across a pulley type questions. Um, there's a certain way to approach these questions that make it a lot easier, so I'm going to show you a method that I think is going to help you uh, a lot. Now, I'm assuming that you've already read question 10, so, um, sorry, question 11. So, I'm, I'm assuming I don't need to read all this right now. But essentially, an Atwood's machine are, is, is nothing more than two masses that are different than each other, that are both hanging over the same pulley attached to the same rope. So, this shouldn't be actually that hard to do initially. Now, it just turns out that you should have no problem with the free body diagrams. Uh, it does come to be a little more difficult when we try to figure out what is happening afterwards. So, what we need to try to figure out is the acceleration of the system. Because no matter what, since they're connected by a rope, both will experience the exact same acceleration. Now, what we do know is that block B... I'll call these mass one and two. I shouldn't have done that. They should be, they should be mass A and mass, uh, hang on, B. There, that's better. Okay, we do know that mass, uh, mass B is actually bigger than mass A, which means I already know that what's going to happen is that this one's going to fly up this way and that one's going to fly down that way. That's what's going to happen. This one's going to go down, this one's going to go up. And you just know that because this one's heavier, so it's gonna, it's gonna win against this tug of war. But first, before we start anything, we have to do our free body diagrams. So let's look at each of them. I'm gonna just draw them right beside each one. So mass A. Well, what do I have? Well, we always start off with our force of gravity. And I also know that there's tension. I also know that the tension must be bigger than the force of gravity because it's going this way which means I have a net force moving it up that way because it doesn't stand still it's not staying still so that has to be the case and for B I have force of gravity and in this case it's the same rope so it's the same tension and oh, I should draw it much smaller because my tension has to be less than my force of gravity because it is overall, the weight is moving downwards. So it has to be going down. Now, the question is, how do I look at this? Do I start writing net forces yet? I would suggest, now this is my suggestion, is that you do not do this until you change your diagram a little bit. Now I'm going to change my diagram a little bit and I want you to look at, see what happens when I just show you this. Okay, so I've taken the masses. Now think about what I've done. I've taken the masses and it's if I've taken each one, I've kind of rotated them up so that now my tension string, my rope, is all in one line. In fact, I don't even, you know what, I don't even need to see the pulley anymore. I, do, I, I don't even care about the pulley. Like it's there, but I, I don't really, I don't really care. Now what's important about this is that this works really well and I'm going to show you why. But what you have to make sure, you have to make sure is that you draw your free body diagrams correct because it's still, if you notice, this free body diagram is going along the length of the rope. So you're still doing it this way. Tension force of gravity. Now I should say force of gravity A because I don't want to get confused here. And then up here, well, which way are these pointing? Well, tension in this case is pointing this way and my force of gravity, ooh, I drew that kind of bad, which is force of gravity B is pointing that way. But now I have everything moving along the same direction of motion because otherwise I would have gotten a little confused because when I talk about force of gravity here pointing down, they're both pointing down. For force of gravity A here is pointing in the same direction as force of gravity B, but they're not moving in the same direction. It is better to show it this way where I realize that force of gravity A here is pointing 
opposite direction of the force of gravity be if I look at the net forces of the two pulling at each other. So what do we got? Let's look at this. I got force net A. Now it's moving, so what do I write first? Mass times acceleration. Never forget that. And it's mass A, right? Little A there. And the acceleration is the same as the acceleration for the other one, so I don't need to write acceleration A or acceleration B. There's no point. It's all the same acceleration. And in this case, it's going to be equal to, well, let me see. I'm going to say that this way is positive. So to the right is positive, which means it'll be tension minus force of gravity of A. And then I got another equation, force net B. And that's equal to my mass B times acceleration. And in this case, my force of gravity is moving in the right. Oops, I remember those lines. And subtracts my tension in this case. So the tensions are actually in opposite directions. But that makes sense. If you pull on either side of the rope, one person feels that it's pulling him to the right, and the other person is feeling that the, ten the rope is pulling him to the left. And that makes sense. So what do I do? I've got two equations. What do I want to find out? I want to find out the acceleration. Now, I know the force of gravity. I can calculate the force of gravities. I know the masses. So the only two things I don't know are the tension and the acceleration. So it would do me good if I could somehow cancel out either the tension or the acceleration. And in this case, I want the acceleration. So if I add these two, if I just simply add both equations, oops, I should probably put this over here on this side. If I add them, what do I get? Okay, well, let's just see what we get. I get mass A times acceleration plus mass B acceleration that equals force of gravity B minus force of gravity A. Well, this is actually pretty good. This is actually not very hard. So I get acceleration. I can. That's a common factor there. So, you know, simple little bit of algebra. Mass A plus mass B. And that equals this. Now, if I just had to calculate that quickly, force of gravity here, what was that force uh, B? B was 3.2, and that would be multiplied by 9.8, because that's gravity, minus, what's the other one? 1 1.2, uh-oh, times 9. Sorry, I have to put this way over here. 9.8. So what numbers am I getting out of this? Well, 3.2 plus 1.2, that's 4.4. .4. So I got 4.4 .4 times acceleration. And that equals 3.2 times 9.8. That's 31.36 newtons. Subtract what? It's 11.76 newtons. So really, acceleration is nothing more than... Oh, hold on now. That's... Um, i got to do my calculator here. 31.36... That's going to be equal to 19.6 newtons divided by 4.4. Um, and what is that? 4.4 kilograms, isn't it? So that's actually equal to what? What do I get? That's 4.4545, blah, 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 blah. Now, uh, let me see. If I look at this, 1.2, 3.2. Okay, so my significant figures is 2. So it's a 4.5 meters per second squared, and I'm done there. Now, I also needed to calculate the tension. So if I want to get the tension, all I have to do is plug it in. So I've got, uh, for example, my net force A. I have mass A, which is 1.2 times my acceleration, which I now know is 4.5. That's equal to my tension minus my force of gravity, which in this case is 1.2 times 9.8. If I do that, I'll bring this guy over, and I'll get a tension equal to, well, roughly um, 17 newtons, I think. Maybe I better check on that to be sure. So yeah, it's 17.16, but I have to round it down to keep my significant figure, uh, significant digits. So my tension in this case is equal to 17 newtons, and I'm done. 
Now, um, looks like I'm about 10 minutes in, so I'm going to have to do a new video to do question number 12, because that one also um, a lot of students seem to have trouble with. But I, I invite you to try to solve it now using that method that I just showed you where I string it out in a straight line. Try doing that first before you check the video. See if you can't do it by yourself. And if you're still having trouble, then go to that video and or, or just go to the video after you do the work and see if you got it right. Okay, see you there.